Hello, I'm Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is episode 14 of How to Survive EVE Online. Now, those of you who are sharp-eyed might have noticed that in the previous episode, I never actually got around to refining the Veldspar that I was mining. That would be a very astute observation. Really, the mission only had two requirements. One, trigger the objective, uh, set off the, obje the objective trigger at the location which I think was either on destroying a Serpentis pirate or on mining the asteroid, possibly both. And the other was to get 333 units of tritanium to the agent, doesn't matter how you get it to the agent. I already had leftover tritanium. So it's just as well. I'll just move the spare Veldspar. Anyway, let's request mission from Loic de Mencier. And he wants us to investigate a Serpentis listening post, and he wants us to break into it using a civilian codebreaker, and he will supply that module to us. And this mission takes place in Clelanon. Uh We don't have to do any salvaging or mining work, so we don't need the uh, mining. Uh, we don't need the salvager or mining laser in the high slot. Let's accept the mission and close, and the game will provide some text to read about hacking and code breakers, and then we'll provide you two completely unrelated skill books. Uh, if you can inject the skill, you may not necessarily have the prerequisite skill needed for it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Let's open the fitting window. Let's take off the mining laser and throw on the light electron blaster. Let's throw on the civilian codebreaker. Insufficient power. Huh. How much power am I short? Insufficient power. Hmm. Alright, you know what? Let me get rid of the afterburner. Yeah, I've only got 23 megawatts, and apparently I was at 23 megawatts, so I couldn't bring the civilian codebreaker online. All right, here's an interesting thing to know about weapons. If you empty your weapons, and they are identical, they, these are both light electron blaster ones, you can shift, click and drag, one weapon onto the other to group them. Let go of the shift key then. Click and drag the weapons onto your ship, you'll load both weapons, and what grouping weapons does for you is that with one module click, you can fire both weapons at once. They will, of course, both use ammunition, so you're still using ammunition at the rate of two weapons worth. But you don't have to click each module separately. This can be important if you've got six weapons attached to your ship. Right-click empty space. Bouncing books. Encounter dead space. Warp to location. Warp drive active. Traveling faster than light. Here's the acceleration gate. You can either... Let's right-click the gate and select Activate Gate. Warp drive active. Doesn't matter whether you right-click the gate and select act Activate Gate, or left-click the gate and then left-click the Activate Gate button down here. Either method works. All right, left click the data storage device and click approach. And let's lock both the data storage device and the Serpentis rookie. Now, our weapon is only effective out to two kilometers. The code breaker is effective out to five kilometers, so we'll probably come in range of the data storage device first. With the white triangle surrounding the data storage device, activate the civilian code breaker. Then left click on the Serpentis rookie, 
And you know what? Let's approach the Serpentis rookie and let's hit F1 on the keyboard. And that causes him to explode. Let's left click the wreck, open the wreck, and let's grab the loot. An Acolyte 1 drone. Ah, uh, drones. I haven't really gotten into the subject of drones. Um, you know what? There's going to be an opportunity in the advanced military chain to talk about what drones are. Uh, so I'll go into more detail there. But uh, to put it in short, a drone is an autonomous device that can be launched from your ship and can attack your enemies for you. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate a drone right now because the game does not allow you to move a drone from your cargo hold to your drone bay. If you were to try, the game throws an error at you. You cannot load to or unload from the drone bay while in space. You may be going through a lot of failed cycles on this codebreaker. I'm not going to bore you with the waiting time on this video. Alright, I've skipped ahead to a point in the video where I've successfully accessed the data storage device, open cargo, grab the two items that are in there. One of these is your mission objective. Uh, left click the station and dock. Warp drive active. By the way, you may have noticed that I bounced off of the data storage device while trying to align to warp. Here's an important tip. To go into warp, your ship has to be moving towards the destination at sublight speed within about 5 degrees and moving at least 75% of whatever your current maximum velocity is. If you bump into obstacles, or if obstacles bump into you, then that's going to delay your ability to get into warp because you're no longer uh, moving anywhere near the direction of your destination. So your ship will automatically try to align to the destination again uh, before trying to go into warp. Anyway, let's drag the Acolyte and all this other stuff and let's right click the Agent, start conversation and everything is green check marks, so we are done with the mission. Let's select complete mission, and we are done. And the agent gives us a hacking skill book. What are the prerequisites on this? Uh, electronics upgrades level three, which I don't think the game supplies for you, so you may have to purchase that skill on your own later. But that's not strictly necessary for the remain for the tutorial series so you don't have to worry about it right away. In the next step in the next episode we will handle both the fifth steps of the industry and the business chains. In the meantime, thank you for watching.